All right, it's all smoke and mirrors, and it's generating a lot of power out west. Let's head back to the valley where our own Liz Clayman has a look at an alternative energy company that's a bright source. Liz? Yeah, you know what? They're cooking with steam out here in Silicon Valley as they come up with solar thermal companies right and left. In fact, last year, I don't know if you guys remember, but when we did three days in the valley, we focused on a company on, uh, called Osra that had all these plans and all these big ideas. They have definitely stumbled. They have fallen by the wayside while another company called Bright Source has come out fighting. In fact, they've just struck a massive deal with Pacific Gas and Electric, and that's only the beginning for Bright Source. I want to introduce you to the CEO. He is John Woolard, and he runs the company right now. And boy, you've got a lot of deals in the uh, offing here, don't you? Well, we, we, we have spent the last several years working with uh, large utilities, PG&E and Southern California Edison, <laughs> on some fairly large contracts. Each one's about the size of a nuclear facility, so over a gigawatt of power. Now you know a gigawatt is about a nuclear facility, and then we go slower to things like megawatts and kilowatts. But let's explain to people what you do. You're thermal solar, meaning you've got mirrors that capture the sunlight, direct it right onto water towers, which are called power towers, right? Right. We take lots of mirrors. We focus the sun's rays up on a boiler. In that boiler, we generate steam, and that steam is very high temperature and high pressure, high pressure steam, really similar to the steam that's produced inside of a coal plant. You then turn a turbine and then generate electricity. Okay. How is it that this is seeming to at least take the lead, or maybe not, against a photovoltaic type of solar? Is there much of a difference between the two? There, there are significant differences between solar thermal and photovoltaic, and they each have their own role as we move forward. If, we have to, if we're going to decarbonize our power supply, we need to have solar on rooftops, and photovoltaic is very good for taking a photon and creating an electron in a solid-state manner. It's just a little expensive and very appropriate in uh, distributed. California law states that utilities must provide 20 percent of their electricity from green sources or renewable sources. So that mm -hmm. pushes business to you. Yeah, as you look at scale, uh, large scale solar thermal becomes more interesting or more important. California has got to get uh, many gigawatts of, of solar power, wind power online. And so if you think in terms of hundreds of megawatts, you can start to relate to the scale that we have to build out in California and throughout the country. Okay. John, I, I love the story, but sitting in your seat last year was the head of Osra, and he had all these great ideas, and he had deals that he was striking, and Governor Schwarzenegger was very excited about the new plant they were going to build in the desert, and they were not able to monetize it, make the money properly. How is it that you are doing the opposite, that you're striking deals and the money is flowing? Well, this will sound slightly counterintuitive, but we move a lot slower than others do. We started, uh, we actually started in the 80s. We built uh, the world's nine largest solar power plants. I think understanding what it takes to build plants, the, the complexity of siting, permitting, transmission, financing, making sure that you've de-risked the technology, I think is all critical to making sure that you can effectively deliver. Help us understand this too. Many of your plants are built way out in the desert, in the hinterlands storage and transmission of it from there to the urban centers. That's also a challenge, is it not? It is, and, and, and we're just building large power plants. We have the same type of challenge you get when you build a coal plant, a nuclear facility, a gas plant. We build lots of natural gas peaking plants, and you have to think through all of those issues around siting, transmission, and uh, all those permitting issues. Okay, you just said think through the issues. I'm assuming you're in the process. You're able to do that now? Oh, sure. Yeah, no, we've been in this process for quite some time. We started early, so starting early and planning ahead is, is really important. We started actually focusing on this in 2005, and we should have our first plants, our first sites permitted by the end of this year. When you look at the competitive landscape, and there are a lot of people trying to do solar, not just in Silicon Valley, but the country of Australia is building a gigantic plant. Can you get in on that business? Are you trying to go global in many regards? And what countries do you see the most possibility? Well, it is interesting that you mentioned Australia. We, we are fairly active down there, and we've actually been shortlisted for a uh, fairly interesting program down there in Victoria. So we're going to look at Australia. We're going to move into Australia with the same uh, thinking and discipline that we've done here. We're going to look at the right sites the right place, the right partnerships, and the right way to build things down there. And talking, talking also about other areas of, you know, we, we discussed transmission and storage, but when the sun doesn't shine, what do you do? Explain to viewers, because I get a lot of people saying, well, solar's ridiculous because when it's raining for weeks on end in Santa Cruz, because we know that happens often, where do you capture the sun? And you yeah. need to then store it. Well, well, what is important to know about solar is it's coincident with peak. 
So when we have, our, when we have sun, we have air conditioners on, we have our, our load spikes, power becomes more expensive and more important to us. So solar, you don't necessarily need to store. You can actually, solar is deployed on those days when it's hottest and when it's most interesting or most challenging. That's when solar generates the most. You get a big support, a big thumbs up from venture capitalists like Draper, Fisher, Jervitz, and a couple of those guys are coming on later. Is that correct? Uh, sure. We've had good support from uh, Vantage Point Venture Partners and Draper Fisher were two of the earliest venture groups that invested in How's us. How's your cash position? Do you conserve? What do you do? We're very uh, conservative. So you cash. don't have foosball tables and free food? No. no like a fact, lot of the old startups in Silicon Valley. Yeah, we've spent very little of the money that we've raised. <laughs> so we raise money and we, we, we deploy it very uh, slowly. Imagine saving for a rainy day at a solar company. It's great to hear your story. Thank you so much. Thank you, Liz. Good to meet Mr. you. Mr. Willard runs the company Bright Source. And, and again, uh, Alexis, you look at a company like this, and last year the key word here in Silicon Valley was solar and cloud computing, and then oil prices dropped so precipitously, but you see who's surviving and who's not. And Bright Source looks to be one of them right now. We'll check in a year with you and find yeah. out. It, it's Back fascinating, to Liz, to see how much changes in just one year there. But speaking of lots of changes on tap, We've got some special guests coming up this afternoon. Tell us who's coming.